And I'm from PanPans.com. I'm here to talk to you today about how we believe that mobile VR uh, can form a business. That's what we're trying to do. Um, what, we, what we're trying to understand is we've seen already today how VR can be certainly deployed in games. And that's the early stage uh, use for this. But we're interested in seeing just how much impact it might have in other areas beyond games. So, um, essentially the question here we're trying to answer is can it become a mass media? By mass media in this context, we essentially mean something that's a, a, a form of interaction and communication, entertainment, that's ubiquitous. So to help us understand this, we're first going to uh, review a timeline of the existing uh, mass media. And from that we're going to try to uh, derive some lessons and to try to detect some patterns from those uh, media. Uh, then we might speculate, speculate on exactly what form uh, VR as a mass media might take. Uh, and then we'll, I'll introduce to you our new startup, Panacam.com, where we're starting to, to help uh, realize this vision. So, in the timeline here, uh, if we review, uh, so, so really the first mass media was print. Um, so this emerged um, really in Europe in the mid-15th century. Um, and it started the uh, widespread dissemination of uh, information. And we're really, to a large extent, still living uh, in that world. Uh, recorded media, too, began in the late uh, 19th century. Uh, and this initially was with audio, but uh, you know we have all sorts of video, vi uh, visual uh, formats, DVDs, and so on. Uh, so cinema too, it's probably the most important, uh, the impactful uh, media of the 20th century. So uh, that emerged in the early uh, 20th century. And radio too has, has had a huge impact on uh, continuing the, the evolution of mass media. Uh, television uh, invented by John Logan Bard and uh, really uh, started hitting the mainstream in the mid 20th century. It's had an enormous impact uh, on, on the whole world. So more contemporary developments now, the internet, uh, with the World Wide Web, with the work of Tim Berners-Lee and the HTTP protocol and HTML, the internet really became a mass media in the 1990s. You see here uh, the Netscape, an early Netscape browser. And then uh, mobile uh, telephony and mobile computing really is a, a primarily a 21st century development. Um, so this is all fine, but I suppose, as I said, what, what are the lessons uh, that can be taken from this? So if we go back to here. Um, so firstly, uh, each of these media was uh, enabled by technology. So I, I referred earlier to the uh, print revolution. So that was uh, Johannes Gutenberg in the mid 15th century. So he had been he had worked as a goldsmith, and he understood um, metals, and he devised a new, uh, you know, new technology essentially to enable durable print that allowed for the cheap uh, printing and dissemination of uh, printed material. He also was the first uh, pioneer of oil-based uh, inks which were far more durable and uh, cheaper than, than the existing water-based inks. Um, this second one here, unexpected usage. So I, I mentioned uh, cinema in the early 20th century. At that time, there were sort of parlors called uh, kinetoscopes. And the early usage there was for uh, boxing matches. You know, it wasn't until later, some decades later, that the potential as a serious art form and communication means was realized. Similarly, uh, Alexander Graham Bell, with the, when he invented the telephone, he thought that the primary usage there would be for people to listen to uh, music concerts remotely. He didn't realize the um, potential in terms of interpersonal communication. And this happened also with the uh, SMS messaging. Uh, when the G GSM consortium devised that in the, the mid-1980s, they thought that it would be used for, uh, you know, networks broadcasting messages to consumers. Um, they didn't realize that, you know, they, they didn't envisage the world we see today with billions of, of these kind of messages being uh, 
sent between people. Uh, so this evolution in form here, I mean, it's, it was probably evident when I showed it from, from print to where we are now with the mobile telephony. Um, so initially the, the mass media were symbolic, so it's a um, textual based communication. And as we, we can trace a certain arc in, in the development of those media, so we, we've gone from symbolic to audiovisual with recorded audio and television and so on, and into in the 21st century to, or the late 20th century to interactivity with um, uh, you know mobile computing and telephony and so on. And I suppose there I've got you know maybe that we might um, speculate that that arc might uh, continue from this point into some sort of more immersive form, and that's really what we're the kind of thing we're talking about today. Um, an important point here is that none of these uh, none of these forms have been assimilate, assimilated, they're, they're being supplanted. So it's not like print media is disappearing. Well, maybe the, the media itself is, but the symbolic communication, I mean, communication using text is not disappearing. So there's, there's something like 7,000 tweets a second uh, sent on average now. So obviously they're still vast and ever increasing forms of this kind of uh, symbolic uh, communication occurring. The other thing here is the increasing speed of adoption that we can uh, trace. So, uh, you know, printed, printing began in North America in 1640, from what we know, and but it wasn't until uh, about 200 years later the American um, American Library of Useful Knowledge. So this was the first mass marketed uh, book, essentially, a series of hardback books. Whereas now um, it took for instance, the smartphone, you know, about a decade to reach ubiquity. And um, we have, you know, two billion of these devices now, and that was from kind of a standing start uh, at the turn of the century. Um, so I suppose the question here is that if we assume that, that mobile VR, VR in general, and mobile VR in particular, might sort of join the ranks of these, these media that I've uh, mentioned. What, what might that look like? I'm going to talk about two things here. I'm going to just speculate on the areas within which VR or mobile VR might be deployed. And then I'm quickly going to refer to the various uh, precise forms of VR that might enable uh, those areas to be uh, realized. So the point here is, you know, we, we do, we've thought of this at Panacam and we're trying to realize and we're trying to find customers essentially. So the point here is that it can be applied anywhere. This list isn't exhaustive, but really it's one of the exciting um, aspects of this, of this field for me is that um, it's, it's so fertile in terms of the ways in which it can be deployed and utilized. Um, the second, so, so, so once we realize that, we then try to think about how exactly, I mean, with lots of different forms in VR, so so how can we, uh, you know, reach into these spaces? So again, I mean, the point here is that it's there, VR isn't just one mechanism. There's lots of different ways. We, we've seen here uh, a 3D world already, and um, we've also seen immersive photography here today. But there are lots of different areas here, and again, this is just hugely fertile for technologists and. I'm hoping for business people as well to, once the potential of these channels is realized, I, I think um, there's a lot of scope for development. So at Panacam, you know, we're, we're keen to, to enable all of these things and to ensure that mobile VR does become a mass media. So we put a lot of thought into this recently and a lot of work. And, um, you know, I'm not sure if that shows it. Yeah, okay. So we're looking at, um, you know, we're, we're starting, we're seeing a beachhead here that we want to start with, with something that we can we can work with, and something with commercial potential, ideally. That, um, so we're looking at immersive photography. So that's where uh, we, we saw an example er, earlier, you know, I'm sure everyone's aware, just of a static image within which, you know, a, a cardboard or an oculus, and you you can look around that, uh, that uh, environment. I mean, this can be augmented with uh, audio narration and sound effects and music and so on. And we've been working with that uh, over the past few months. We're, we're interested in, in the whole range of things, and we've got all the various hardware that we've seen today. But 
our, our own interest, and this is probably relevant to, to Google, I mean, Google have the, the cardboard SDK as we've seen, but a lot of what they do is web-based as well. So we're, we're keen on the, the web-based angle. We think there's a lot of potential there. Um, so, uh, so to that end, we've got you know, platform.panacam.com. So essentially, um, we're trying to determine this in a low-risk way, if there's a demand for this kind of uh, product. Um, we're, on the one hand, we're, we're targeting these immersive uh, photographic experiences towards particular sectors. We think, for example, tourism it can be uh, deployed and uh, digital marketing also. There's, there's a couple of examples of that already. Recently, uh, Volvo had a, a Google Cardboard product where, which uh, you know, enabled a potential buyer to, to experience what it's like to, to sit uh, in a car, uh, a new Volvo car. And um, so yeah, we've got this this platform. So like I say, we're we're trying to realise in a low risk way um, if there's a, a demand for that here. We're we're trying to maintain flexible and the, uh, flexibility. And the areas that I showed earlier, we're as I say, we're interested in all of those. So at the moment, you can you can take a photo sphere, you can create a photo sphere with your camera, you can set, email it uh, to platformpanicam.com, and then you'll receive back a link that that you can then browse on your, your, your device within your, your cardboard. So um, we'd like people to try that and to let us know what they think. Um, um, so at the moment, we don't have the, we're working on, you know, and it's one of our areas of interest, exactly how uh, photos are, can be stitched together um, to create this immersive um, capability. But at the moment, we're just using Google Camera uh, to, to create that uh, equi-rectangular panoramic image. So essentially, I'll show you this, this is kind of, when you run this Google camera and select the panoramic mode, I'm not sure how many people have tried this yet, but essentially to create the uh, panoramic in image, you do something like this. This is just in, in my apartment here, and you know, you get the idea here, you're, you're, you're creating flat, you're creating this immersive uh, photograph out of a, a series of uh, flat images and stitching them together. Um, so, uh, what, well, what I'd like to, to show you just before that is, uh, well, there's our, our site, um, and there's the platform that I, that I referred to earlier. When you, when you create this with this Google camera, you get a, a link back, basically, uh, something like that, your, your Panacam photosphere is ready to view. Um, and then when you click on that, you get the, uh, the photosphere. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that there. But this is just something that I took quickly, and then we can, you know, uh, that doesn't really show up. But again, we have the, the stereoscopic uh, view there. Uh, and that's the Samuel Beckett Bridge in Dublin. So um, it's a simple idea, and uh, but we'd like to know what people think. And um, the other, I, I mentioned earlier that you know we're we're looking at across all areas of this. And somebody mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we're, we've got prototype uh, imaging equipment that we're we're doing. This is a uh, so immersive photographs is one thing, but we're also uh, convinced of the potential of immersive video, so both live and recorded video, um, and we think that that's a very compelling use case. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, unless there's any questions on that. Thank you, first. Sorry, uh, any questions? That recently, I found out that uh, YouTube is working on the different angle video uh, showcase on the YouTube channel. So, like, if people has recorded the video in the different angle, you can use it and actually uh, interact with the video and see the different angle of the video. So, I guess that the mass media you're going towards is getting the right place with the video or not. Perhaps. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we we had um, we had heard of that, and we know that there's a lot of activity in this space at the moment, and all the uh, the big players, including Yahoo and including um, uh, Google and Apple and everyone else, are you know are doing something in this area, and um, we think there might be a potent 
potential now to, to, we all know, I'm sure, if we're interested in VR, just how quickly the whole field is evolving. Um, so Google recently, you know, they're doing some of the similar things to what we're doing. I mean, one of the issues is uh, we saw earlier a fish eye lens, and I think there's, there's the hardware developments are occurring. And, um, you know, we see a lot of um, projects on Kickstarter for cheap uh, panoramic cameras. So that's happening on the one hand, like the acquisition of this kind of content. Uh, but we, and then on the other hand, though, we see potential of um, a platform to allow for the hosting of that. Now, maybe YouTube are, are well positioned, you know, to do that. But maybe somebody specializing in that, maybe we see an opportunity there. And um, it's important as well. To, we want to allow for the, so I've shown you there the uploading of the content, but obviously then we're keen to harness, you know, maybe editing that co content, augmenting that content, and sharing it. Um, we're, we're encountering very early the kind of issues that were described earlier about um, navigating in and out of these photospheres, and maybe we envisage, oh yeah, that, that's something I, I didn't show actually. So any, I'll, I'll just quickly show this, um, any content that's uploaded at the moment goes into this gallery that we're, we're um, building. So the gallery you can see there uh, just contains these individual photo spheres. Now there are only two in there at the moment. There's that one that I put in there. But the idea here is that we want to, so any photo spheres that go up, go into this gallery. And then we're trying to figure out those mechanisms. You know, we heard about the clap earlier and the voice and the, uh, even the Arduino, the external controller of some kind, to go in and out of these experiences. Um, so pretty roundabout way of answering that. But yeah, a platform to, to host and share that content. Yeah. Um, looking at the, the previous slide you had with the camera, um, have you looked into doing sort of any video work, any 3D panoramic videos? Because um, I know there's kind of at least one UK company I've seen has started doing it for tourism around London. Yeah. Um, and we love content work because we're, we, we show their type of videos, but we love Irish content, UCD or any of the other groups. Yeah, um, yeah, we have. We've, we've, we've actually got uh, cameras ordered and we're aware of the, the, the entire space. There's a, a company, um, Jaunt Vior, and they recently created, I'm not sure if you saw the a concert, Paul McCartney live, actually. So they do that. Um, one of the things about them, it's still quite uh, cumbersome, expensive hardware. So I think the joint uh, unit is kind of $15,000. I mean, that one I'm showing there is, you know, it, it's their two megapixel cameras. It, we, we, so it's, you know, maybe $50 or something. But we're building a more comprehensive um, solution at the moment with, with full HD and full immersive. And, and the very first thing we'd like to do is create local, create Dub Dub Irish uh, content, you know, because there's a lot of ideas um, that we'd like to try with that. Uh, we've, all, we've learned, you know, about the, the stitching of these images together and the, the algorithms required uh, for that. And, and also the the technical considerations of, you know, if you've got kind of six HD cameras, it's a lot of data, especially if you're talking about live feeds, it's, um, and especially if you're talking about a mobile uh, delivery mechanism as we are today, it's it's a lot of data, and we, we very quickly ran into that, um, especially if you're, you're talking about, it, as I say, a mobile uh, unit. But yeah, we, you know, we'd love to, to, to talk to you about that, and, um, you know, I'm sure there's some way you could, you could look at that, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Oh. Okay, fine. Thank, Thank you again. Thank you, Toki. Thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> what we are going to do is, uh, we'll get pizza a bit later, so you have time to have your 